here we are. A global pandemic is inherently going to have a, a lack of control, a lack of predictability. Maybe over time we start to get used to like, okay, new variant comes. We have to behave in a certain way. There's maybe a peak. It goes, maybe we gain a little predictability over time. It sure doesn't feel quite like that to me just yet. But, um, but so so you already have that stressor you have you have the priming of of uh disease on our perception and then you have all of these novel things which a, a lot of uh kind of when, when we talk about disease making someone more conservative it's 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 also just that's kind of another way of saying just a lower threshold for ambiguity and different things and yeah. novelty and a higher need for closure. And then you introduce all of these new counterintuitive things like everyone looks strange in a mask. They're not the most comfortable thing in the world. No, there's nothing intuitive about about injecting yourself with a, a flu. I, I donate blood all the time. And every time I do it, I still need to like go through a mental process <laughs> of, of, you know, getting ready to accept the needle. So there's asymptomatic spread that are, that we didn't evolve, uh, to, uh kind of the disease yeah. cues to pick up on, which is going to theoretically lead to a lot of, uh, cognitive dissonance and maybe coming up with odd yeah. stories to uh to make sense of this and then you have all of these um the these uh, like these new policies implemented i know in my town um when they when they installed the first roundabout um the uh you know the the circular rotaries the circular intersection it was it just broke people's brains it it was the, there was social upheaval you know the government just wants us spinning in circles and all of these things and there's there's if you don't break there's videos it ha even happened in my town or people People just literally don't even see it and just dukes a hazard right over the, <laughs> the over the round because policymakers know like, oh, this happened in Europe and we know once we implement it, this is this works really well with traffic. But no one's ever uh, like I heard the Native Americans didn't see Europeans coming on the ships. They were just arriving at the shore, like consciousness painted over the the possibility <laughs> of there being ships. And that's what roundabouts are like. And and there's there's no policymakers aren't going door to door, or handing out pamphlets and explaining this to people. And 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 so this is just this is just a roundabout this is just changing an intersection yeah. in a way that's novel and no one's ever seen everyone's used to the x or the t intersection and no one's seen a circle before they aren't prepared for it and why is there two lanes why are we putting a fast lane in this thing and and that's just changing the construction of an intersection in a, in a small town yeah <laughs> now try the last two years instead. Um, it's great that you brought up a key word there, uh, which is ambiguity. Yeah. Like risk is risky and we're all willing to take risks at times. And some of us are more risk averse and more risk addictive and like huge variability. And like, basically there's some circumstance where everyone enjoys risk and at the other extreme, there's some where everyone finds it aversive. Ambiguity is something different. Ambi okay, here's risk. Like they sit you down and they say, here in this bucket, there's a hundred marbles. 50 of them are red, 50 of them are blue. Uh, close your eyes and reach in and pick one of them. And here's the deal. If you pick a red one, you're going to get a huge reward. And if you pick a blue one, we're going to beat you senseless and dump you in the alleyway. So do you want to take a chance or not? And some people do, some people don't. Depends on what your risk threshold is. Like that's what risk is about. Here's what ambiguity is about. You sit the person down and you say, okay, here in this bucket, there's a hundred marbles. At least one of them is red. At least one of them is blue. Pick a red one, you're going to get rewarded. Pick a blue one, we beat you senseless. Now what? And everybody hates it. 
everybody gets much more, even though it's the exact same on a logical level, it's a 50-50 chance, but with the red and blue, it's a 50-50 chance always. With this, it could be anywhere from a 1% chance to a 99% chance that just happens to average out to 50%. And it blows people's fuses. Nobody is an ambiguity junkie. Everyone finds it aversive. The insular cortex, all the dis-ease parts of the brain activate like crazy. And that's what the last two years have been. If you want to know like what your risk is for driving while drunk, you can track it down, down to like your age group and demographic and all that. And you can find out how risky it is or how likely you are to get polio if you get a polio vaccine. But we've just spent the last two years not being told what the risks are, instead being told, we don't know. We don't know. Who can tell? There's this invisible stuff. It could be anywhere. It could be everywhere. It could be on the surfaces. It could be in the water coming out of your... And ambiguity just blows the fuses of every organism out there. Last two years has been about ambiguity, and that's like lack of control and lack of predictability exponentially on steroids kind of thing.